Major developments in the killing of U.S.-based journalist Jamal Khashoggi. President Trump has just signaled in an exclamation point Latin statement that he will not be taking strong action against Saudi Arabia. That is, despite the fact that his own intelligence agency, according to sources, has concluded that the crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, ordered this murder on a uh, Washington Post columnist. Uh, let me just read a portion of the president's words here in the statement that uh, is in from the White House. The crime against Jamal Khashoggi was a terrible one and one that our country does not condone. Representatives of Saudi Arabia say that Jamal Khashoggi was a, quote, enemy of the state and a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. But my decision in no way is, is in no way based on that. This is unacceptable and a horrible crime. King Salman and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman vigorously deny any knowledge of the planning or execution of the murder of Mr. Khashoggi. Our intelligence agencies continue to assess all information, but it could very well be that the Crown Prince had knowledge of this tragic event Maybe he did, and maybe he didn't. That being said, we may never know all the facts surrounding the murder of Mr. Jamal Khashoggi. In any case, our relationship with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, they have been a great ally in our very important fight against Iran. Here's my observation. My question to you is, it seems that, the, is this White House essentially saying, vis-a-vis -vis the Secretary of State and through this Trump statement, that this White House is essentially saying, we don't care what happened. We're sticking with Saudi Arabia. That seems to be the essential message. I mean, with the words of President Trump himself with regards to whether the crown prince was responsible, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Ultimately, the U.S. doesn't really care. The U.S., according to President Trump and to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, is much more focused on the weapons deals uh, and various investments that, agree, uh, that exist between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia. President Trump talks about $450 billion. Uh, I have not been able to verify that figure, but certainly we are talking uh, about more than $100 billion. The U.S. is very much focused on fighting Iran, uh, and President Trump clearly believes that it needs Saudi Arabia to be able to perpetuate or have any momentum going in that fight. And he also mentions the U.S. being focused on the war against terrorism, though, of course, Brooke, it does bear mentioning uh, that Saudi Arabia has played a very mixed role in the fight against terrorism, uh, often being sort of the arsonist and the firefighter, um, because it plays a role in both perpetuating the type of religious ideology that is connected with so many terrorist acts, but also, of course, it has played a strong role in trying to fight terrorism because it's a threat to the monarchy itself. So essentially what you're hearing here from President Trump, from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, it doesn't matter that Jamal Khashoggi died. It was a terrible thing, but these things are more important. What I really really took umbrage to or, or found sort of unsettling about the statement was the sort of insertion of the possibility, oh, Saudi Arabia has described Jamal Khashoggi as an mm -hmm. enemy of the state who was I also a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I agree with that or I'm not saying that that's got anything to do with my decision, but I'm just throwing it out there into the Why ether. dangle that, Clarissa? Why dangle that in the middle of this statement? Why? You are you are dangling it with one specific objective, Brooke, and that is to make Jamal Khashoggi look like some kind of a deranged Islamist would-be terrorist. You say the word Muslim Brotherhood or the words mm -hmm. Muslim Brotherhood to a lot of people in the U.S. who don't know the full history of the group, who don't understand the full socio-geopolitical context in which and it exists in the Middle East, and it frightens them, and they think they're bad guys, and they think they're terrorists. And so it's a very clear uh, and unsubtle sort of dig if you will, uh, at Jamal Khashoggi, which seems in light of the fact that he's not here to speak for himself, to defend himself, uh, and in light of the fact that he was a respected columnist for the Washington Post, was well known and loved by many uh, in the U.S., sat down in evenings with people drinking wine all around him. This man was by no means uh, any kind of fundamentalist, and to sort of even tacitly or insidiously imply so just feels unkind and unnecessary, Brooke. Yeah, yeah. Clarissa, stay with me. Let me bring in our, our senior White House correspondent, Pamela Brown, because, Pamela, you heard uh, the secretary being asked at the very end. We knew today that that final assessment would drop, right, from the intel agencies with all the facts, what they believe to be the facts of, of how Jamal Khashoggi was, was murdered. Do you know 
if the president has seen that report. We've seen the president today pardoning turkeys and, and issue is, issuing the statement, and he's about to bounce to, to, to Palm Beach. But, but beyond that, do we know if he's, he's eyeballed it, A, and B, then talk to me about the timing of the release of the statement, perhaps even before he's seen it? Well, the bottom line here, Brooke, is that he released the statement before seeing this assessment from the intelligence community, this report. And so that is what is so puzzling about the timing here, Brooke. Remember, it's been nearly two months since Jamal Khashoggi uh, was murdered inside the Saudi Arabia consulate and Turkey. And since then, there's been sort of the slow walk strategy here at the White House saying, you know, playing up that the important relationship with Saudi Arabia, but also saying that it's a terrible act, but we need to wait and see all the facts. And then on the same day that the president is supposed to be briefed, received this in-depth report from the CIA, uh, the assessment of what happened. He releases a statement before that, and our reporting, Brooke, is that the CIA has assessed that the crown prince directed the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. So the timing is certainly um, questionable here. We know the president is supposed to leave later today to go to Florida for the Thanksgiving holiday. What I also want to point out is the stark difference between this statement from President Trump and the vice president just a few days ago overseas, Vice President Pence said that every person involved in the murder of Jamal Khashoggi will be held accountable. But then you look at the statement from President Trump basically saying it doesn't matter if the crown prince had knowledge of this or was involved. He said maybe he did or maybe he didn't. And the big picture here, Brooke, is that once again, the president is at odds with his with his intelligence community. This is a slap in the face to the intelligence community who has been working uh, for the last several uh, weeks, months to gather this intelligence to make this assessment. The fact that he didn't even wait to see this report before issuing this statement certainly um, once again puts him at odds with the intelligence community. Brooke. Stunning. Stunning. Um, Pamela, thank you. On Pamela's final point, speaking of uh, that intel report, Josh Campbell is with us, formerly of, of the FBI. And again, you know, the fact that uh, Trump is dismissing the, the intel from folks in the CIA, again, who believe in BS, had a hand in this murder. He is issuing this report without even getting their full assessment. Your thoughts That's on that? Yeah, exactly. This whole thing is stunning. I mean, if you look through that statement, uh, several points in there that are troubling. But as Pamela mentioned, this is a slap in the face of the intelligence community. Now, the public should understand that the intelligence community doesn't make policy. They don't make foreign policy, but they do inform it. And they go to work every single day gathering facts, gathering intelligence, bringing their best analysts to bear on hard problem sets in order to help inform our national leaders about what the truth is in the world. And this signal to them that we don't really care what you say, we're going to uh, formulate our own conclusion, is going to be perceived as a slap in the face. And it goes beyond just this one issue. If you think about all the host of uh, hard problem sets that the intelligence community works on on a daily basis, they continue to see a pattern of when there's an issue that might impact the president personally, yeah. he you know, will jump to discount their work before their conclusions are even finished. So it's troubling on a number of fronts, Brooke. Um, yeah. I've got Sam Vinograd. Can we talk to Sam Vinograd here as well, uh, who's seated next to me? And you know, you've been listening to my conversation with with Clarissa. I thought she hit the nail on the head and pointing out the this this dangling this this seed of doubt, perhaps in this in this journalist, in this Washington Post columnist, that perhaps he was an enemy of the state, perhaps he was this member of the Muslim Brotherhood, which would frighten some Americans. Uh, it's dangerous of him. It's dangerous, but the entire statement is fear-mongering. He starts out a statement about Jamal Khashoggi's brutal murder, talking about Iran and talking about the terror that they spread. He doesn't get to Jamal Khashoggi until, I think, the fifth paragraph, and that's probably purposeful. He's trying to distract from the fact that he is giving MBS and any other leader that does business with the United States or pumps oil a license to kill. He is condoning state-sanctioned murder going forward as long as you give dollars to the United States. And he says this is about U.S. national security. I'd like to find one American who feels safer knowing that they could be targeted by Mohammed bin Salman or any other foreign leader if they hurt his feelings. As long as there's still money flowing through these arms deals that we're waiting to see or oil. It's a signal to these other countries 
you can get away with it. Exactly. It's a green light. And the buck won't stop with Mohammed bin Salman. We've seen Vladimir Putin use chemical weapons in the United Kingdom. We've seen Mohammed bin Salman now target a legal resident of the, of the United States. Jamal Khashoggi legally resided here. He happened to be in Turkey at the time of his murder, but he was a legal resident of the United States. So again, if this was about U.S. national security, this would be about not only punishing the crime that happened, but deterring future ones.